Today I'm happy about another 356 video. Gonna share the update with the transmission and talk about the game plan on that. If you weren't here last week, I was intending to fix a transmission oil leak. I had a few leaks at the side cover and at the rear seal. Ended up taking it apart, doing a full inspection and found some bearings that weren't failed, but the failure is imminent. About a year and a half ago, I bought 17 pallets of Porsche parts. I think 13 transmissions from 356, mostly 356, all the way up to uh, 901, which is the early 911. And behind the scenes, I've been selling off a few of those. They weren't stored carefully. They're, a lot of them were stored outside, so some of them have some corrosion damage. But I've been taking them apart. I've been pushing gears off pinion shafts and doing all that at the urban workshop that I belong to. I have the bearing supports and the presses and made some tools and stuff. So getting it apart, I'm not concerned about. Um, putting it back together is harder, but there's also a lot of information available, not only from the factory workshop manual, there's also the Elfrink manual, which has some, some alternate uh, assembly tips, which I think are viable and quite good. And then there's a whole tutorial available on the 915 transmission and the assembly techniques and some of the tools and techniques and DIY tools, there's actually a ton of information available. So if you sort of take all the information and, and apply it to the 915 uh, or to the 741, it's, it's, I think it's, it's doable. So my, my game plan is, is this. I'm going to continue assembly of the 356. In fact, today, I'm going to be working on the axle tubes and my goal is to get them installed on the car, put in a uh, an extra transmission that I, I have and we'll practice taking some things apart on that one. But to go ahead and finish assembling the car, get the tires on it and so forth, but also, you know, creating some tools to help set up the pinion and the differential. So I'm not afraid to try. Uh, you know, my demeanor is such that I, I have the patience and I'm not the type to, to break things. Uh, I do hit a lot of things with hammers, but in terms of breaking things and throwing wrenches and destroying stuff, that's typically not my, my mojo. I don't typically do that. So while it might take me longer, I'm actually really looking forward to the experience and sharing it with you guys because I don't think it's gonna be that hard. Famous last words. This one, this one has a bent hex. Obviously need to replace the axle boots, which I have some solid axle boots. This one here is also a little different. It has this heavy uh, ring on it, I think for more even sealing pressure up against that flange. The only way to do away with it would be to disassemble the axle tubes. Number one, we got to remove this pin by pushing it out with a press. This is one of many press tools that I'll probably fabricate and just, you know, added a little base to it. I just ground one of my press tools down so it's the right diameter for that pin. I wasn't planning on removing this bearing, but of course I need to because in order to push this casting off, 
you need to be able to, um, you know, push on the tube. And the only way to get to the tube is it's behind the bearing there. Now, you don't want, I don't really want to buy a new bearing if I don't need to. Now that the bearings are out, I got to push the tube out of the housing. The pin is no longer locking this together, but it's still a press fit. So this socket does go in there, but it's a little loose. You can see how it, how it wobbles around in there. Plus it's got a pretty significant radius on here, as does the tube. So you don't want to push against the radius and actually expand the tube out. It could lock it all up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to push this off at the workshop anyways. So I'll bring some round stock, I'll turn it on the lathe so it fits inside this housing and we'll push, we'll push on it the right way. This is why I always keep steel lying around here. The saw is pretty great, it went right through that. There's been a slight change of plans. I just called at the workshop and the metal lathe is down for maintenance. It's, it seems like it's always broken when I need it, but I searched around my place for some more things to push. Now this conduit, this is electrical conduit, it's actually really thin wall, but the diameter is perfect. It goes, it's perfect. It goes right inside there. So if I can push on the conduit without it buckling or deforming, this should come right out. So I think I'm gonna to head to the workshop and use their press because my press is not long enough or tall enough for all this height. I'm back already from the workshop and struck out, unable to remove the pieces. All I got done there is they have a parts washer and so I put these things in the part washer and got a little bit more of the grease off of them. So now I'm on to, uh, I guess, plan C now, thinking of another way to extract the housing with just a puller. Try the Ugga Dugga. I, I was thinking about putting an ink mark on there, but it looks like this hole goes right where that, that cutout is. Just about out of travel on that. I thought I got that thing long enough, but it's pretty much loose now. I think we can probably just use the hammer to get it the rest of the way off. Okay, the internal bore on this looks fine. This part here where I put the hole in it really kind of took a beating. So I'm just gonna put some grease on it, anti-seize paste. Ultimately got it off and now I know how to do it and I have the tool. If someone wants to borrow this tool, just let me know. I'd be happy to let you borrow it. Um, send me a deposit or something, I'll ship it to you. Uh, it didn't damage the end of the tube at all. And the end of this tool didn't get damaged either, but I ended up welding it upside down. So then I had to go back and take some zinc off of the other end, which is kind of silly. I, I didn't mean to strip both ends, but you know, this works. I should have made it like probably a quarter of an inch longer. The Volkswagen boot is the one that didn't fail as badly as the other one did.
So made in, um, made in West Germany. So this is an old boot if it says West Germany. One of my other reasons for taking this apart is I really wanna verify that the tube is straight. I'll use a better straight edge on this soon, but I can tell right now it's not horribly bent. This side has a little bit of scratching. You can kind of feel it with your fingernail. So I'll likely try to polish that out. We don't really want any raised areas. This side looks much better. Some grooving right there. Let me know if this is like a Volkswagen part or something else. I don't think I've ever seen one on a Porsche before. I like to say it's only metal. And even if a 356 has got more expensive metal than the others, at the end of the day, as long as you don't damage the metal, you're fine. And I had kind of three whacks at getting those axle tubes off, but with a little bit of cobbled together tools and perseverance, I think it's possible. And so that's one of my mottos. It's only metal. Um, it's going to be on a new shirt. Uh, I'm wearing one of the Renin shirts right now by Corey. We're going to announce that on Wednesday. So if you can join us on a live stream Wednesday. So this video will be out on Saturday. Follow us on the, uh, the Wednesday, the week after, and it will be a uh, question and answer. You can ask me or Corey anything you want, whether it's garage related or t-shirt related or anything else for that matter. Um, we'd be happy to uh, talk to you guys and maybe give you guys some more background information, more uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff, whatever questions you may have. If you have anything in particular you want to talk about, please leave a comment down below and we'll be sure to uh, answer those questions. And also in the meantime, uh, check out his website. Corey's website is up and running. It's all new, renin.io. So it's R-E-N-N-E-N.io. You can look at some of his existing shirts and then hopefully there'll be some garage time shirts up there soon. This is not a 356 differential, really pitted and, and got surface rust on them. But what I'm thinking of doing with this is making this into an inspection tool to measure the pinion depth. You can just place the dial indicator inside, take the spider gears out, put a dial indicator in there, and you can turn this into an inspection tool. Porsche was nice enough to put these little indents in the housing so you can get a puller in there. So now we're left with just that inner race and that's the part I want to pull on. This is a pretty inexpensive Harbor Freight puller and it fits the, the, if the size is right and these fit inside the indentations, I just need to be able to push against the carrier, which is this part right here. It's easy enough for me just to slice off another one of these discs and then I can taper it on the grinder. I ground down the diameter on my bench grinder. It's in the other room, so I can't really film in there. But this fits right there. So it's hooked into that spacer. So I'm gonna put it under a little bit of tension and then just before this thing starts to feel like it's gonna fail, I'm gonna put some heat on it. So I just don't wanna to pull too hard with this cheap puller. Oops, that's bad. So we gotta hurry up before it shrinks. I think the other side might have been a little bit corroded because without heat, this is coming right off. Almost too easy. So I'm not sure if 
this race might have been spinning on there. It looks like it was just starting to spin. So deep inside there is a roll pin <clears throat> and that allows you to take apart the differential gears inside. So this should pound out. Actually, you don't even need the press. It just comes out with finger pressure. It's pretty easy. There we go. That's interesting. So you can see this needed to come apart anyways because it just has a little bit of corrosion in there, a little surface rust, a little bit on the gears. This is a extra transmission case for a 356. This came with the pallet of 17 parts. You can see it's been left outside. Um, it's got some kind of modification here to the clutch arm. Some kind of modification up here, kind of block out that hole that's been glued on top. Um, it's been stored outside, so you can see like that bearing is completely, you know, rusted. The races are rusted. It's been just been neglected, but we can use this for setup and see what how we can fit that differential in here for some pinion measurements. This guy was built in August of 64. It's just five months after my other transaxle. That's right here. This looks like it was, uh, yeah, 564. I think I'll clean up these side plates and get all the goop off the side of this thing. Okay, a few cycles uh, in the ultrasonic cleaner and also the electrolysis bath basically allowed me to free up this bearing. I just used PV blaster in it and you know, it's not a good bearing by any means. It, it cleaned up a little bit, but still stained with rust and so forth. But this could be helpful in terms of mock-up purposes. Of the two differential carriers that I disassembled completely, it's down just to the bare casting, this is the early 901, I believe, and it is not compatible with the 741. The 901 actually uses smaller bearings, which I'm a little surprised. It's for a 911 and it uses smaller bearings. This one, I believe, is from the 741 transmission, and this is compatible, at least in the diameter, with the 741 bearings. I'm just cleaning up the inside of this mock-up bearing with some 400. And ultimately, I'm gonna hone or sand the ends of these down, but I'll do that on the lathe. Okay, the problem is this won't go down because the flange for the ring gear is too big for the housing. So all that means is we got to put it on the lathe and we don't need the ring gear at all. So we just cut this whole flange off. So once this is all the way in and supported by both uh, differential covers, then there'll be a dial indicator inside the housing and its pointer is going to point right here onto where the pinion goes. This is the uh, race right there for the pinion gear. So that's how you measure the pinion depth from the center of the housing. I've gone as far as I can go on the differential measuring tool. Without the lathe, I can't make it fit and the lathe is broken. So that's okay. I will just continue to develop tools as I go. The other thing, some of you said it was, it'd be great if you could practice on another transmission. And this is a good example. I can remove the race, which is bad on my transaxle. This one here, I've sprayed a lot of PB blaster on it, but this one is very rusty like the rest of it. So I'm going to remove the snap rings and start looking at fabricating something to remove these races and also the bearing.
You see there's a snap ring right there. And then this one is a different kind of snap ring. This one here looks like it just has like a like an opening in there. So we'll have to find a way to, to pull that off. Yeah, these are some pretty light duty snap ring pliers and I'm not sure they're up to the task, but uh, let's see. The difficulty with this is you're, you're not only fighting the pressure of the snap ring, but it's also the rust. Nope, that's not, that's not good on the pliers. This is a really blunt tool, just trying to make it move, which is proving difficult because it's so far recessed. If I scrape a layer of rust off, I might get more penetrating oil down in there and that might help, but I might, I'm probably gonna have to let this sit overnight. Certainly not in a hurry. So this is way more difficult than it needs to be, but I'm gonna let this soak a couple days in the PB blaster or crow oil and come back and, and look at this later. But what I can do is clear off the table and I will work on the axle tubes, get those flanges straight. See, this is the section here that's kind of dipped over. This is the side that's way worse. I'm not sure how this damage gets there, but it's kind of like that on both sides. It's this edge right here. There's a couple of nicks on it from the screwdrivers or whatever, but uh, just hit that with some 80 grit and get this ready for paint. I'd like to use this marble surface to check the flatness of this flange, make sure it's gonna seal. I just cleaned the backside of that with my wire wheel on the bench grinder. And so now I'm going to lay it on here but I had the idea of using these rollers that came out of those bearings I took apart. So my idea is to support this on the bearings. Just like that. And then to go underneath here and slide one in and just look for any, any sort of bow in the shape, especially on the areas that I hammered. So to push this down, I have this very rounded shape and I'm just gonna put it there in the corner and just give it some taps. And we'll check as we go, just to make sure we're not getting too crazy. This is touching in the middle now, so that does make an improvement. I'll try to show you what this looks like. We will be using some Permatex on the gaskets here and it will take up some of that space. I don't feel like painting today, so I'll do that next week. Don't forget Wednesday live stream. Leave your questions down in the comments below. We'll see you there. Thanks for your support.